Welcome to Madison Avenue Christian Church. Whether you're worshiping here in person or online at home, we are so glad that you are here this morning. If you are visiting with us, we ask that you fill out the perforated part of the bulletin and place it in the offering plate as it is passed so we can get to know you a little better. We welcome Emma Joyce on violin to worship this morning and we thank her for sharing her musical talents with us today. Emma is in her third year working towards a Bachelor of Music in Violin Performance at the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music, studying with Timothy Lees. The January board meeting is today immediately following worship here in the sanctuary. So after Simon's benediction, you can just sit right back down, listen to the beautiful postlude, and then the meeting will begin. You should have received your first mailing for the capital campaign this week. Uh, a second mailing will be coming in the next few days. It has time-sensitive information in it, so please open it as soon as you receive it. And at this time, I will turn it over to Bruce Kintner. Well, good morning again, everyone. Oh, we can do better than that. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> if you expect me to be excited about being up here, can't I expect you to be excited about being out there? You know, anyway, that's the way it works, so. Each week of our capital campaign has a theme. Serving, building, growing, celebrating. Dan Weeks got us off to a fantastic start last week by challenging us to think through what does it mean to serve Christ by serving others. So now we have that interesting word, building. That's pretty easy to understand, right? Our building needs help. The 33-year-old elevator is, to be kind, five generations removed from the controls used in the modern elevators you would take if you go visit an office building or something like that. If elevator years were dog years, our elevator would be closing in on 100 years young, right? We used to have three boilers to heat the water to provide wintertime heat here in the building. The boilers were installed in 1990, just like the elevator. Those boilers were designed to last 20 to 25 years. Do the math. 
So we are well past sunset, so to speak, in their useful life. We're down to one working boiler. So we hope to limp through the winter on our one boiler, raise money during this capital campaign that we need, and get one larger and far, far more efficient boiler come springtime. I could go on, but I think you understand that there are plenty of building opportunities, that's another word for need, described in the capital campaign brochure and literature of the mailing that went out this past week. Yes, we usually think of building as a noun, but building is also related to growing and expanding. A church is more than just a physical building. What is important is what is done with the building, who we help in the building, and how we share the good news of Jesus Christ both inside and outside of the building. That is why our capital campaign is focused on more than just the physical building. With everyone's collective help, we will also focus on growth opportunities to build new relationships. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. Almighty God, we pray that you help us Creator God, we pray that we Loving God, we pray that we Forgiving God, we pray that you Amen. Shall we stand and sing our opening chosen. Let us pray.
eternal God. You have called people across the ages to be your voice, to be your hands and feet. We do not understand your wisdom, but we know that entrusting your work in our care is possible because you lead us. Even before Moses and even after the disciples, you continue to call people to service, to prophetic voices as you are calling us today. We pray that you will grant us listening hearts. May we be obedient disciples, taking steps every day, not trusting in our capacity, but knowing that you are walking before us and you are making things possible for your purposes. So we offer ourselves today asking that you will anoint us, asking that you will care for us, and in all that we do, may your name be glorified. For over a hundred years, you have led Madison Avenue Christian Church. As we conduct this capital campaign, we pray that you would continue to lead us and guide us. There is so much of your work to be done. If we trust in our capacity alone, we would not be able to do any of it. But with you, all things are possible. So as people of faith, we move forward, knowing that a bright future is ahead, not for us, but for the kingdom. And may your kingdom work be done in and through us. We pray for every person who's bowed down before you this morning. Our personal prayers we offer some of what we ask, we don't even understand. But you know the end more fully than we do. Grant us our prayers. Open possibilities that are beyond our imagination. Eternal, everlasting God. Our lives are more than what we can understand or know. We pray for our world. We pray for peace. We pray for those who are hungry, people who have been forgotten, neglected. We pray for those who are in hospitals, people who are asking for a miracle. Continue to be with us throughout this worship service. Hear us even now as we join in the prayer that you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. And ho, ho, ho.
<laughs> this morning's uh, scripture reading is from Jonah 3, verses 1 through 5 and 10. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he cried, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. <clears throat> and the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God repented of the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it.
I don't know. It's the second Sunday in capital campaign and we get texts like this. Jonah and Samuel. And I am sitting and wondering what how how do you how do you we should probably go with a different text. And then it occurred to me. In the heart of both these stories and the stories to come lies our understanding of our calling as people of faith and our calling as a church and for us to once again reposition ourselves and understand that our destiny does not belong to us our destiny belongs to God and who we are and what we are becoming is not of our making nor our choosing. It is of God's desire and choosing. And until we grasp that more fully and offer ourselves in God's care and be directed by the Spirit of God, we cannot live true to the saints of the church who has gone before us, who have kept the faith and have given us this great legacy. So the story of Jonah starts with, and God calls Jonah for the second time. Same thing happened in Samuel's story. God calls. And if it takes twice, God will call twice. Madison Avenue Christian Church, if it takes three times, God will call us three times. And God's calling is endless until we become those people who understand the nature of God, the spirit of God, and God's purpose. God's purpose. If you just started with God call the second time, you don't understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the story of Jonah. Way back, God called Jonah. And God told Jonah, bear with the pronunciation of this name. I'm right, you're wrong. Because I have the pronunciation right for this name. God called Jonah and said, go to Nineveh and tell the people of Nineveh that I have seen their deeds. They have oppressed the poor. They have marginalized people. They have ignored justice. They have lived a life of greed. Go tell the people of Nineveh that their time is up. I'm no longer going to remain silent. And Nineveh will be destroyed. And you would think Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh because he did not want to go tell them that they are going to be destroyed. No, not really. You know that story. That is a whale of a story. And then finally, Jonah is so scared because he knows that outside the realm of God's obedience, there isn't life that is secure. So Jonah finally says, Okay, God, I'll go to Nineveh. So that is that second call. And when Jonah goes to Nineveh, it says he walked the length and the breadth of Nineveh because it was not very big. And he told them, people of Nineveh, God is so angry, God's going to get you. You thought God is ignoring you? Nope. 
God is coming after you and you are done. Can you cast that? You see, Jonah liked that part of his call. He loved going around telling people, you're done. Can I pause here for a moment? One of the favorite things for the churches across generations is that one. Going telling people you're done. God's coming after you. God's angry. And Jonah loved that part. But as the story goes, the people of Nineveh repented. The beast repented. I, I want to see that part. The emperor repented. They turned from their wicked ways. And they did penance. I don't know, they put on sackcloth. That's what the story says. My feeling is when they repented and they put on sackcloth and they sat there, what they did not do is act out of their greed and selfishness and trample over the poor and the weak and the homeless. <laughs> it's not just the people of Nineveh repenting. It is not the beast and the emperor repenting. Get this line. I want you to go home and read that story again. In, read it in uh, Revised Standard Version. I, they get the translation right. The rest of them are chicken. They got scared of that word. What am I talking about? New Revised translates it this way. And God repented of the evil that God were to do to the people of Nineveh. Can you believe that? God repented. What does that mean? That means that God's grace and God's love is so abundant that God's heart melted. God said, I can't do it. And the people have given me a reason not to do it. I had to do it because the cry of the poor was so loud I couldn't stand still. But now they have given me a reason. Folks, God's love and God's grace is so abundant. Its depth is something like this. God repented. God is looking for a reason to turn around and get us back into the throne of grace, under the th throne of grace. God repented of the evil that God was to do to the people of Nineveh. And God told Jonah, Haha, Jonah, guess what? I'm not going to do it. And John, this is after the story. And Jonah says, I knew this. That's why I didn't want to go and tell the people of Nineveh. I know you, God. You are this most caring. It says in the story, if you go to chapter 4, you're the most caring, you're the most loving, you're the most everything, you're gracious, you are so embracing. I knew you would do this. That's why I didn't want to go tell the people of Nineveh that they are going to be destroyed. If you were going to destroy them like I went and told them, I wouldn't have hesitated. I would have loved it. I love that part. I love that part. Raving like a lunatic. I knew you would do this. That is why I didn't want to go to Nineveh. That is why I bought a ticket in the other direction. That is... Jonah. You know something? You know what's so telling about that story? Everybody in that story repented. The people repented. The beast repented. The emperor repented. God repented. Jonah did not repent. If our calling as a people of faith is of righteous indignation. And if we get 
the God will get you part. God is so angry with you to the T. We may be like Jonah. And during this capital campaign, I was sitting and wondering, how do I tell the story of Jonah? What does that have to do with us? And then it occurred to me. See, Jonah's story is an anti-hero story. Madison Avenue Christian Church gets what Jonah did not get. That is, our calling is to, wit is to witness to the grace and love and warm embrace of God and nothing else. It is not our, our agenda. It is not our anger. It is not our frustration. It is not our lack of vision that cannot see God's future. It is about the nature of God for a church to understand God's nature and to be a living witness to the nature of God is our calling. And during this capital campaign, I do not have to convince Madison Avenue Christian Church about its calling to be the place that is welcoming of everybody that extends care to everybody that would be compassionate to those who are hurting I do not have to convince Madison Avenue Christian Church that because from the day I've come here I have seen Madison Avenue Christian Church be a witness to that calling but what I would like to do today is for us to revisit our core conviction if Madison Avenue Christian Church has been called by God to be a witness, it is for that purpose. And when times are hard, Bruce did a good job telling us elevator is out, furnace is blinking, oh, don't run away. The fire alarm is not working, I hope fire department didn't hear that sermon. And the temptation would be is, let's cut where we can, let's hold back more of our own, so that we can fix all these things. And where do you cut? You know what I'm talking about. Cut outreach. Cut all the things that is outside the upkeep of what we are having, building. And at this capital campaign time, if we do not revisit our core calling, and if we engage in those kinds of Jonah factors going sideways, we too would be the people whom God will keep on calling and we'll be heading in all other directions other than God's direction. And there it was. The angry, unrepenting Jonah later on goes sits under a tent in the hot sun, complaining again, angry again, talking about division again, spewing hatred again, not caring about anybody else's pain than his own again. And God rejoices, the people of Nineveh rejoice, and the kingdom work is done, which I believe is Madison Avenue Christian Church's calling. I know we are quite disturbed about angry voices, judgmental voices, voices that cause division everywhere, and we should be. But if we can raise our voice a little louder, and, and if we can act a bit more bolder in terms of what our calling is and overpower hatred with love do a little more so that this community and the world would notice our caringness 
and they too would practice caringness. Madison Avenue Christian Church then would be living true to its calling. And our witness would glorify God, would be a blessing to us and to this community. To God be honor, power, glory, and majesty, now and forevermore. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray for the offering. Gracious and generous God, we thank you for our individual gifts, talents, and the joy that fills our hearts when we come together in this place. Everything we have belongs to you, and we rejoice in giving back to you some of your abundant gifts through the missions of this church. May we all prayerfully consider our forthcoming pledges for Max Capital Campaign, which will ensure our presence in this community. Bless the tithes and offerings we give today. Let your majesty be the light that guides us. The compassion of your son be the love that inspires us. And the presence of your spirit be the energy that empowers us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
seated. As you prepare for a meditation, I often look to the scripture for ideas. And I found a scripture that said exactly what I wanted to say. So as I sat down with pen and paper, I thought, why am I going to sit here and rewrite what the scripture says? So I will be reading today passages from Ephesians 4, speaking of the building of the church body. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Skipping to verse 11. For Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may build up, may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Yes, we support this building, but as we build each other up, the body of Christ builds and grows and becomes a firm foundation in this community. Let us sing together. open to this table as Christ who's made us one. Today let me guide you with something a little different before we receive our communion. May you think during the music today to maybe delay the eating of your bread. Close your eyes. Think of a burden or a person that is on your heart. Listen to the music 
and then release that burden or release that person to God. Eat the bread, feeling the nourishment and strength of Christ. When we drink the cup together, be mindful of swallowing the juice. It is Christ's mercy and grace flowing through your body, making you whole. Dear Lord, as we share in this time of communion, let us receive this bodily experience as a means of your grace and remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
let us listen to the words of Paul that he used as he instructed the people of Corinth. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us drink the cup together. What a wonderful church family we have. If you would like to be a part of this place in a more permanent way, I guess, uh, you're part of this place if you're here today. But if you would like to come forward and make that public, if you are visiting with us online and you would like to make that a public way, we ask that you would uh, call Simon or call the office. Uh, if you would like a more private way and you are here today, you may get in touch with Simon or one of the elders. Let us stand and sing together. So I do this benediction every Sunday. May the peace of God that passeth all understanding abide with us now and always. I want you to know something. That benediction also takes us beyond our life here and now. Now we know in part, 
But there's coming a time we will know more fully than what we know now. And in that faith and hope, I want you to entrust the burden in our heart, knowing that in God's world, all would be well. Peace be with you. Amen.